no role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, I want to talk about leadership mistakes. Mm, I, I've made plenty of those in my lifetime. <laughs> what's it? What's it like? You know, coming from somebody who hasn't. Um, you know what? <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah. Clearly, we we both have. Um, the reason I, I want to talk about this is because you know you, we receive lots of messages on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, email from listeners who are asking for specific leadership advice on situations, and sometimes the, these questions are. Um, kind of one-off questions. And so what it, what it got me thinking of is that, you know, clearly there are mistakes that we can make that, um, you know, that don't have far-reaching re- consequences. There are ones that we can kind of get past and there are other ones that, that are a little bit harder to do. And so what I want to talk about here is the difference between those and, and what are some of the, the big leadership mistakes that you really want to avoid, especially if you're taking over a new team um, because that's kind of when it's more likely to happen, but really in general, the, the mistakes that you really want to avoid. Yeah, I mean, I can share that there are definitely tons and tons and tons of, of mistakes that um, most new leaders make um, just, you know, as they're learning and as they're growing and as they're just trying to figure things out and navigating new relationships and navigating new responsibilities, trying to build into, um, you know, uh, uh, scheduling or just whatever the heck it is they're working through that can cause a lot of um, a, a lot of simple mistakes. But the bigger ones for me and things, you know, I, I had a conversation with somebody maybe a couple of months ago about this, uh, about mistakes and about things that I'm um, looking back on with, with my experience and tenure as a leader. What are some of the big rocks? Some of the things that, you know, this may be either bit really, really hard or something that I have to be conscious of, uh, conscious about over the long term. And what I shared with them was kind of overvaluing um, somebody's potential like that. Oh. That's what I shared. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something that as a, as a new leader, right, you tend to kind of have your eyes wide open. You're looking for, um, for people that are either kind of like on the plan that are, you know, that are reflective of maybe positive attitude, maybe they're, you know, more than willing and motivated to help in any way they possibly can. Um, and then maybe you see people do really good work in, in this context or in this kind of like quick little snapshot, um, or they showed up really well in this meeting. Um, and then we tend to take that and then just kind of paint with a really broad brush and say like, wow, they've got great potential. You know, we should be able to, if, if they've taken this responsibility and done really well, I should be able to give them more responsibility. They continue to do well, or they should be able to do good with this project. So they, good, they did good with that project. And because they showed up well in this meeting, I could have them present in this other meeting. And like, that's what ends up happening is, is we tend to only look at the the tops of the highlight reels and then make that as our assessment of somebody's potential um, without really taking the time um, over, you know, having multiple elements of responsibility, a few projects, um, many different interactions, taking the time to uncover uh, and have dialogue with with one of our people uh, around what motivates them. Those are the types of things that I think lead us to overvaluing somebody's potential. And then that can really cause a problem when you start to stack, you know, so much responsibility on their shoulders only to find out later that they really, they weren't there yet. They weren't, they weren't able to take all of that on or to hold that responsibility. I actually have done that in the past. I I did that once as a new leader of a team. And the reason, the the reason it bit me is because the person who I thought was, you know, as the, the words you used on the plan, you know, kind of doing, doing everything right. What they were doing was putting their best foot forward for their new leader, <laughs> you know, you know who, who was me at the time. And so it was just kind of this, this situation where I didn't think that was happening. I didn't think that I was uh, seeing not the real side of a person, but rather just what they wanted me to see. Because at the end of the day, if they had continued that, if that had been the real them, that would have been fantastic. The problem was that it just wasn't the real them. It wasn't. It wasn't who they actually were. It was the the facade they were trying to put forward at the beginning, and I fell for it, and and that was a real tough one to to kind of move through. Um, the 
here's my kind of my annual or my uh, my episodic uh, parenting reference here. When I, when I think about big mistakes leaders make, I think about the ones that I would prevent my own children from making as opposed to allowing them to do in order to learn from that mistake. And so, you know, if the if the kid reaches up to touch the, the hot stove and they get a, a, a little blister and they cry for a minute, then um, sometimes maybe that's the right thing to do is instead of stopping them to let that happen because that's the best way to not let it happen again, of course. But I'm not going to let them learn from the mistake of running out into a busy street when they are two years old because that's not a mistake you can come back from if something were to happen. And, and so you prevent that one from happening. And so when I think about big mistakes that leaders make, I think about it in the context of if I'm a leader of leaders, do what, what do I allow my people to do because jumping in and preventing it from happening is the wrong thing letting them make the mistake and learn from it and move past it is the right thing because it's something they will be able to do if they go through it the right way. You know, maybe it's a, a conversation and an apology, or maybe it's a, you know, a little bit of a mea culpa moment. Um, those are all fine. And I think, I think they strengthen leaders in the long run, as long as they're not happening daily. Um, but the, the mistakes that people don't come back from the career ending mistakes, those are the ones that, you know, as a leader of leaders, I would say I would try to stop my people from happening. And I, I, I can think of a really great example um, that has happened very recently in an organization that I do some do some work for. There is a leader who it has not been a new a new leader. They have been a leader for a, a while, and the the team that they took over is having some cultural issues and they're trying to go in and fix the performance part of it but really there's there's a cultural issue associated with it too and this leader is one that leads by uh vulnerability by um putting themselves out there and talking about some you know personal issues that they've gone through a lot of the things that we would want to say are are hallmarks of a good leader and that can lead to situations where they are giving advice on things and advice on interpersonal relationships, advice on um, you know really trying to meet the, the people where they are in, in terms of solving the problems of their of their own lives. And two of the employees who this person tried to kind of reach out to to help threw them under the bus as someone who in in the the interest of trying to give advice and help was actually trying to sabotage their relationship as friends. And this person's having a hard time coming back from that mistake because the team, even though it is completely dysfunctional and, and don't work well together, they have found a common theme to work together on, which is their dislike of a new leader coming in. And, and it, it's essentially allowed them to kind of galvanize around that. And, and the leader's having a really hard time getting through this um, because of that mistake. So I, I think th these are the kind of mistakes I'm talking about where where once it's once that foundation is laid, it takes a lot of work to come back from, or maybe it's not even possible to come back from. No, I, I think it's like that, um, like being over empathetic to a degree is is one of those situations. Similarly, in that in that same type of vein, where if as a new leader, um, you spend most of your time, you know, sitting down and listening to people and trying to counsel them and thinking that. That leadership is um, a space that is akin to maybe like parenting and life advice and things like that. If that's how you are spending your time as a new leader, then you you are now setting that as the expectation that that's not only what you do as a leader, but that's that you're setting that that kind of like this is how I want you to spend time with me as your leader. And so, of course, the the conversations, the problems, um, the personal things will continue to to increase, you know, day after day after day because. As a leader, even though it feels like you might be helping in the moment, um, that can cause that to be kind of the way in which people view you and how they want to spend their time with you. And you spend less and less and less time talking about helping them become better at their job and developing professionally because you're running around, you know, attempting to solve personal things. And like, look, absolutely, when you lead people, there is a, a, a part of that, that you have to be empathetic and you have to listen and you have to engage and connect with people. Absolutely. Like that's just a part of the role that is, is how I see it. Being conscious of uh, bringing, you know, um, bringing balance to those conversations, being conscious of not overextending yourself in some of these spaces will help you in the long term 
um, provide better advice, provide better resources to where people should go. You know, I, I can definitely be an empathetic ear and I can listen to what's going on. I can also tell you at the end of what we talk about, I'm not the best person for this. I, I like that's not my career. I, I don't have any uh, letters after my name. Um, I'm not capable of providing you really much more than just, you know, an ear and, and maybe some general advice. But like we have resources. And there are people out in this world. Um, that may be able to help you work through these types of things. I'll be more than happy to help you connect with that, uh, whether that's within an organization or whether it's, you know, here, here's some some websites you should go check out, you know, and see see if there's anything there that you that you find that could be helpful. But I think that's where a lot of of newer leaders will fall into that trap of like now all of a sudden, uh, you know, a big part of their job is being a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a medical doctor. And then, you know, it feels like maybe you're helping, but number one, are you really, number two, are you the best qualified person to do that, right? And I think that those are things that that are bigger rocks and bigger traps that pe- that new leaders can fall into under the guise of believing that this is what their team needs. Um, and then it completely changes uh, your ability to to have any, in my opinion, real, real positive impact and influence over their success and their role and their professional career. Right. I mean, it goes back to the very first thing you said, which is the if you kind of over index on the empathy piece and uh, to to the detriment of accountability, that the that's a hard one to come back from because at the end of the day, what people want from their leaders is consistency and predictability. They want to be able to predict what that leader is going to do or how they're going to react when they walk in the room. That that's that's like number 1. So if a leader is unpredictable and you don't know how they're going to react, then it it prevents you from doing anything that is um you, you, you won't take any risks as, as an employee. You won't do anything um, that that could be uh, you know beneficial to the the business. You'll kind of like stay in your lane so to speak. And when a leader starts with over-indexing on empathy and kind of meets people in the, you know, trying to solve the, the, the personal problems as opposed to holding them accountable to the job or at least having a, a healthy balance of both, then what do you do when a, an employee needs some accountability because they're just not performing the way they need to be performing? It, it is, it's much easier to dial back accountability on a team that becomes well oiled and high performing and and does things on their own than it is to go from being the best friend that everybody loves to holding somebody accountable that that's like you know the the, the old uh you know walk into the bar and the record screeches and it's like wait a minute you know what what, what what's happening here i thought you were the nice one apparently you're the one who was going to you know you're the mean one now who's going to get me in, in trouble and all you're doing is what you should have been doing all along, which is holding people accountable. But when when employees are kind of, when they let their guard down because they think that that's not who you are, it might feel good to them in the moment and it might validate your actions as a leader to make them, uh, you know, think like, oh, I'm, I'm making progress with this team. They're, they're liking me, they're, they're, they're taking to me and, and, and things are going well. Yeah, things are going well because things are going well. But if you don't have the credibility and the the foundation set of a, accountability, when it comes time to hold them accountable and it needs to be done, you're going to get some real pushback if the first time they've had any type of you know uh, expectations set, foundations laid for what what you're here to help with and what your expectations of your team are. If they haven't heard that going forward many times, then um, then you're you're going to get some pushback when that first time happens. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us this episode's One Minute Hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. The One Minute Hack. All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your pen and paper, and I want you to write down a list of expectations you have of your team that you will have to hold them accountable to, whether it be performance, um, whether it be results, whether it be attendance, um, you know, following rules or policies, whatever it is, write down a list of those things, the things that if they were to not go the way that they need to go, you know, you're going to have to have a conversation with one or more people about it um, sooner rather than later. Anything that's on that paper that you write down, 
you need to have conversations with your team about long before you have to have the conversations with them when they're happening in the moment. So what you're essentially doing is giving your team the answers to the test. That's what this is. This is, you know that the, the accountability to what the expectations of the job are, that is the test they're gonna be expected to do. And you need to tell them, hey, this is what's gonna be on the test. I'm gonna be holding you accountable to this and this and this. And you're gonna be holding me accountable to some things too. It's a, it's a two way street for sure. But setting the expectation in advance and going over those things over and over again will mean that when the day comes, not if, when, because it will happen, that you have to hold somebody accountable for something, there's no way that they can say this is out of left field. But I did not I did not know this was going to happen. I did not know you were the kind of person that was going to be talking to me about this. I thought you were this and this and this instead. So give them the answers to the test. Make sure they know what to expect of you. Make sure they know what to what you're going to expect out of them from an accountability standpoint. And uh, and and when you have to make that happen, it will not be surprising and it will land a lot better. Yeah, I think it's a great woman to hack and and I completely feel that like the best thing that new leaders can do is establish that right at the beginning and, and and sometimes it's it's like here's the actual like by definition things that you know I'm going to stand for as a leader or this is my beliefs or this is how I want to show up and then sometimes it's you know painting a little bit broader but having expectations I want to be a leader that you can come and talk to about anything I want to be a leader that you know can can help navigate things that happen in life um, and at the same exact time, I want you to, to understand that, like, but we have a job to do here and that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not these types of things. Um, I, I want to help you. But at the same time, that's not the best role that I can fulfill for you. So if you come to me with these situations, let's let's talk about them. Let me do my best to provide you with the resources that you'll need to work through some of these things. Again, telling people up front, that's the space you want to show up in. When they come to you and you can reference that and say, do you remember when I first got here? Like I said, I, I want to hear you out and see if there's something I can do to help you with this, but I'm going to provide you a resource that will be able to do it much better. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I also think that that um, you know people don't want to feel like they've put themselves out there to a person who doesn't care. So when you have these conversations, it's really important to have those conversations with empathy if you're not the right person to do this. So that you're not sitting there while they pour their heart out and talk about these problems and you go, yeah, I'm really not the right person for this. You know, it's like, it's like I think about just, I think about being a customer for a place and you walk up and you start telling somebody what's going on, thinking they're gonna help you. And their answer is, let me get you the right person for this. And I'm thinking, great, I, I should have just asked for the right person to begin with, as opposed to, because now I'm gonna have to tell the exact same story again to the, the other person. Um, think about it from that standpoint. M make sure that, that you don't make your people feel like that they have talked to the wrong person um, that at least you were the right person to start the conversation with and that your job is not to solve the problem, but to facilitate the solving of the problem um, and, and they'll at least feel validated in coming to you to begin with. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time. <laughs>